Let me know. Please. Hello. Better late than never, am I right? Um, it is Thursday. Yes, it is at noon. And I'm Cece from Cece Restyled. Um, I'm a furniture artist in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I'm also a brand ambassador for Redesign with Prima. And I'm always late at that. I should probably add that too. I'm always late. That's a good thing to know about me. Um, but anyway, so it's noonish. EST. <clears throat> One of those mornings, you know what I'm saying? Um, anyways, today, okay, so backtrack a little bit. Backtrack to forward track. Tomorrow is February 5th. Friday? <laughs> I, know, I don't even know what day it is anymore, I'm gonna be honest. Um, February 5th, new redesign with Prima decor transfers, decor mold, or, and decor tran stencils come out. Woo -woo. I'm super excited because the stencils are like the perfect size and um, they're about, I don't know, 10 by 12, 10 by 14 ish, 10 by 14 ish, we'll call it. So that's a good size for drawer fronts. If you wanted to get crazy, you could do walls. It's just a good size for all different kinds of projects. So that's pretty sweet. And the designs are very uh, utilitarian. You can use them on all different kinds of projects. They're not so, most of them aren't so specific that you have to use it on one type of, you know, design. You can use the, most of them on all different kinds of styles. So that's really cool. Um, hey, everybody. If you are um, hopping on, say hello. Hello, Rozzy. Hello, Roz. That's my Silence of the Lambs voice, right? Hello there, Roz. No, okay, moving on, sorry. It's been a long morning. Um, okay, stencils, transfers, I don't know exactly how many there are, but there's a lot and there's some good ones. And I had a plan today to, um, well, let's, let me show you. The, this piece, I don't know, you maybe, maybe not have seen it, I don't know. But this is a piece I was working for, on for a client that's got some redesign transfers mixed in. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's a sideboard, but it has a top to it, okay? So I haven't done the top yet. Um, I haven't completed it yet, but that's what we're working on today. So what I'm doing is I am going to incorporate some of these older transfers. Uh, this is Wondrous Floral 2, um, one of my favorites of all time. Wondrous Floral 2, and that looks like this. Okay, that's that. Look at all those pretty colors. Just a little bit of blues and um, the yellow guy and the, and then this little flower right here. These two, these, this little bunch is my favorite. These little, I don't even know what those are called. Some kind of something, I don't know. I feel like I should know the names of these flowers, but I'm no horticulturist. So look at the pretty, pretty, pretty colors on these flowers. Mm -hmm. So I've got them on the bottom of the sideboard. I feel like I kind of need to incorporate them into the top as well, but I don't want it to be too matchy matchy. I mean, I want it to go as one piece together. You know, both pieces look like one piece, but at the same time, you know, I wanted to have it a little bit of its own um, stuff going on. So I decided I was going to add some of the, um, some of the new transfer designs that are coming out tomorrow um, into the old ones. That's the kind of day I'm having. Um, but it'll get better, it'll get better. So that's what we're gonna do real quick. And I had a plan to use one transfer and then this morning when I was getting ready, I was like, I'm gonna switch it up. So I'm gonna switch it up, but I can't show you the whole transfer because that's what tomorrow is for. I can only show you part of it and that's okay because it's, um, it's cute. It's real cute, but I think it'll go better with what I have um, envisioned. So let me show you part of this sneaky peeky real quick. And then um, we'll get to rubbing it on, placing it, rubbing it, peeling it, sealing it, waxing it, getting it out of here, <laughs> right? So here's a little part of the transfer. See? And I can't even tell you what it's called. See that? I love me some greenery. I mean, greenery is always in, it's always appropriate. Anytime someone's like, what's wrong with my staging? What do I need here? Greenery. What's, why does this look so not complete? Greenery. 
you need greenery. It makes everything soft and um, organic and kind of, mm, I don't know. It just adds a lot to just about anything, any room, any piece. So greenery is what you get to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this uh, sheet here. We'll just start with one of the sheets so you can't see the whole thing. But let me pick which one first. Mm, that one's okay, that one's okay. That one will definitely work. Okay, we'll start with this guy. Yeah, we'll start with this guy. So um, basically, and I gotta roll my transfers back up, you guys, because the new transfer manufacturer um, where they are being produced these days is uh, a little bit different than the older transfers. You, most of you might not um, notice a difference, but if you use a lot of transfers, you will. And one of those, um, not side effects, but one of the indicators is that the backing paper doesn't stay on super well. It's not supposed to be stuck on. It's supposed to be loose-ish, but it's a little more loose-ish than usual than in past transfer um, designs. So, um, oh yeah, you're not supposed to be looking on Miss Alicia's chest. I'm gonna show you that later. Um, so, it's a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, it's a good thing because, you know, I don't know. Just, it's not a bad thing is what I'm trying to say. Um, you just got to be more careful with it. So that's all. I mean, as long as you know to be careful with it. So now, instead of just throwing them on the floor all crazy, I roll them back up and I put them back in the tube when I'm not using them because the backing sheet will fly off and stick or your um, transfer will stick to itself and then you're up. S Creek because you can't really bounce back from the transfer once it sticks to itself. It's stuck. It's done. It's done. It's over. So, um, let me put this up real quick. No, nope, that's not it. That's not it. That's it. Okay. So this is our piece, our top to our sideboard. Okay. Oh, um, down here. So this is the top. It's, uh, you know, it'll go up. This is obviously it's on its back at the moment. Let's see if we can move it a little bit more, more better. So, let's see, here we go. How's that? Can you see? That's not a, that's a terrible angle. That's just awful. All right, so, how's that? Will that work? That'll work. That'll work. So this is the um, bottom. You know, this is like a little shelf. And up top, you see the top with the little um, carvings here. So there's a little green flat spot here up top. <sighs> See the little green flat spot up here? Okay, and then there's a larger one right here. We're gonna work on this one for now. Um, after I get my transfers all placed, layered, applied, then I will seal it. Well, before that, you might be able to see my um, colors here. So I did the green, this is two coats of the green. That I blended in a little bit of a light minty green in the middle for that highlight, okay? And then um, the purple around the edge, I am going to need to do a second coat on or uh, um, another coat where I'm just blending in some shadows in the corners, you know? So um, after I apply my transfers, and I would have had it already painted that coat with the blending and the shadows, but you know, time is this thing that likes to run away from me and never have time to do all of it. So that's why that's not done. So we're gonna do our transfers. Then we can touch up our purplish gray. This is called Grateful Dead. It is a um, paint couture color from a line of, um, a line of paints that is named, I chose the colors, okay? So it's the CC Restyled Remix Color Collection and it is uh, all my favorites in one palette and most of them were together depending on if you're one of those contrasty kind of people or if you're one of those um, matchy matchy people doesn't matter it's something for everybody and um anyway so that is guac and roll with a highlight of Elvi uh, elvis parsley and then this is called grateful dead okay so that's my paint i'm applying my transfers directly onto the paint okay it's not sealed of any sort, wax, none of the above, none of that. So directly on dry paint. This has been dried at least overnight. I think I did it last night, but um, this has been dried overnight. And um, I wanna make sure that it's clean of debris, dirt, whatever fell from the sky while I was sleeping last night, you know? So I like to wipe it down. 
because the transfers won't stick to dirt. You can try, but it will hurt. And we've got Wondrous Full too. And um, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Uh, I don't know. The greens are a bit different than in this guy here, um, the new one. So that's your sneaky peek. This is our oldie peek. And here's just some extra scraps I think I have of that. So the greens are not, they're a little different throughout these. <clears throat> oh, this is my favorite too. I like this little guy here, little orphan. I like him because you can cut them and put them wherever you want. Um, <clears throat> but that's usually what I do with my transfers. I kind of cut them and place them and layer them. Customize them, have a want to. And if you don't want to do that, you are more than welcome to just slap them on the front of your piece. See how they have that example on the front? It looks pretty, right? So they all seem together like that to make one big image if you prefer to do that. And that's fine too. But you know, we like to get fancy. So I think first I'm going to apply my, um, my new transfer that shall remain nameless until tomorrow. And what I'm, what I'm envisioning is... Please don't run my transfer. What I'm imagining is kind of, you know, a bulk of flowers coming out this way, okay? And then on the top piece, a little cluster coming out that way, okay? So opposite corners, you know, heading kind of towards each other. And then I might have to sneak a couple little skulls in there somewhere. I don't know, because I did on the bottom. I snuck some skulls in. Anytime a client is like, um, you can put whatever you want. Skulls, this, that. I'm like, skulls it is. Skulls it is, my friend. So we might have to throw some skulls in there. And um, I don't know if I have any left. There's a Steampunk 2 transfer that has a couple skulls in it. One has a little top hat, or maybe both of them do. I don't know. I don't know if I have any of those up. Oh, or gears, okay? Uh, the Steampunk 2 transfer has little, um, the Steampunk gears, what are they called? Cogs. I'll have to see if I have any of those, because if I do, those would be cool too. Mm, let's see, I think I have some up there somewhere. I don't know, we'll do the cogs last. So, um, so what I want to do is start building up my bunch of flowers coming out this way, okay? Um, so these little leafy vines are going to be kind of my guideline, and then I'll just add little clusters here and there where I think will look good. And... I can either cut this just how it is, see my branch, I like them coming out from the, you know, the side because it just seems more natural to me than just placing them in the middle. Where's that branch go? Is he just a floating branch? No. Nah. He's coming out from a tree, but you can't see the tree because the tree's over there. So um, I think what I could also do is cut out that individual branch and place him, but I'm thinking I might as well just plop this right on down there because... If I leave this here and don't cut it out, it will add a, um, you know, some, it'll add some oomph to my cluster. Does that make sense? Add some beef to my, to my little flower cluster here. This might be better, actually. Is that better? Closer is better. Is closer better? Yo. There we go. Now we're cooking with fire. Right? Okay. So let's go ahead and just... I have this inset area to work with. See this little inset um, bubble edge here? Um, I could measure it and cut my transfer to fit, but I like to just kind of crease it. So the new transfer manufacturer I was telling you about, they are so kind as to put these grid lines on the back. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line my grid lines because this one just so happens to fall where I want to cut it. I'm going to line my grid, up, grid line up right in the little crease. Ooh, and I got it perfect on the first try. I'm just going to crease it like that. I'm going to go ahead and cut off these little pink berry guys. Because, I mean, I like the pink berry guys, but I don't know if I'm going to need them. So I'm going to cut them off and save them for later. Always save your transfer scraps. Always, always, always. If they're usable or, you know, a little small piece, you never know when you're going to need it. So save them. Hang on to them for later. Possibly later. And oh, that's not done. All right, so I've creased my top, so I know where the top is going to end. Okay, um, I can go ahead and cut that off, and then 
do the same thing on the two other sides, or I could just do it all at once. And uh, that's probably what we're gonna do. So I just use my transfer tool. You can use the fancy schmancy one you can get at Redesign with Prima or from your retailer. Or this one comes with it, works just fine too. They both work, just kind of matter what feels right to you, what you prefer, what makes the job easier. And for me, it's all about what space I'm working with. If I'm working with a specific size space, I like to use one or the other. So this is obviously good for wider, larger areas and creasing like this. And um, this is good, I like for small, transfers with small parts and pieces. So let's say never ending story, for example, is an all black text transfer, okay? It's a thousand little tiny pieces. Really pretty, I love it. It's a great supplement transfer I, is what I call it. I put it, you know, in with other transfers, you know, to add some texture and all that. But it's just black text. I suppose you could use it alone if you wanted to, that'd be okay, but um, anyways, it's all these little tiny words, <laughs> little tiny words, all individually, pretty much, and so um, I like to use this for little pieces like that. It's just like, I don't know, it, it just helps get those little areas on better, in my opinion. Um, that or I use the corner of one of these. It's like the smaller concentrated tip you use on those little guys is just better. So I use this or I use like the tip of my, this guy, just like that. So I've creased my little, where I want to cut, okay? You can also use a pen or a marker. I'll just go ahead and use a marker. I'll do this the right way. Okay, so there's that one. And then there is that little guy right there. See, there wasn't a guideline on those two sides. So I had to make my own. Improvise. So now we can cut out our section of transfer we're gonna use. I can see this on so many things, it's so pretty. I mean, greenery goes with everything. Like, what does greenery not match? It matches animal print, it matches all the flower colors, it matches hearts and diamonds and animals and patterns, and it matches all the things. Okay, so I'm just cutting gently. Because my backing paper, remember, on these newer transfers is a little loose, a little loosey-goosey. See, it just falls right off. And if these stick to each other, you know, then you're you're gonna be crying. You'll be crying shame. So let's see. Let's make sure our transfer fits where we want it to. And that'll do, that'll do right there. So let's go ahead and just peel away our backing paper fairly carefully. And we want to handle our transfer with care because we don't want it sticking to each other. You want to try as best you can not to stick your fingers on the back of the adhesive part because you know you don't want it on your fingers you want it on your piece or canvas or whatever you're putting your transfer on wall whatever you want it on that not on your fingers transfer fingers are no fun okay so i'm just going to rub that in place real quick um just an initial kind of here's where you're going all right boom and then i'm going to take my um tool and i mean you can really kind of start wherever I usually start from one end and work my way to the other end, or if I'm in the middle of something and I don't have it butted up to an edge anywhere, I just kind of start and work my way out. Or I just start wherever I want and I just start rubbing all over it with this stick. Doesn't matter, get it on there. Try not to scratch your paint. That's no good. This way, rub all the ways, up, down, side to side, whatever you got to do to get it on there. And <clears throat> um, so most of the time, the transfers, they take a little bit of elbow grease. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, you, you can't just like, you know, just go like that and it's on there. You gotta really kind of rub it on there with your tool. But I've noticed with the more chalkier style paints that are more typical of painting furniture, you have to rub a lot harder. The paint I use is a acrylic-based paint, and so it's a little smoother. It's less. 
it's porous, but it's not quite as smooth as, I mean, not smooth, um, chalky and porous as, you know, other types of paint. So I've noticed the smoother the surface, the transfer seems to take really fast. Like I put some, I put a transfer on my dishwasher, which is the um, stainless steel, you know, front, just a, your typical silver front dishwasher. And like, I barely stuck the transfer on there and it just stuck right on there. Same with the mixers I've done, you know, they're metal or um, some sort of enamel finish that's like the shiny smooth enamel on appliances. And it just like sticks so fast. So I've noticed that the smoother, less porous surface, it just kind of transfer, it just takes really quickly. And this paint, it, it takes much better than most paints I've ever transferred to. I don't, it's pretty cool. It's awesome, actually. It's a little bit less muscle work, which is cool, but. Okay, we got a little bit more in this corner to rub on. And then. Pick one end corner, wherever, and just start peeling up. And wherever your transfer hasn't stuck, like these spots right here that I kind of, I kind of don't really, I'm not really good at getting the edges very well in the first round because I'm scared I'm going to slip and scratch my paint, um, which is, a, I mean, it's a possibility, but I can also, so, sometimes I'll take like the backing, old backing that I've already peeled off, like let's just say, this little sheet here, once I peel it off, I'll save that, and if I have a big sheet laying around, I'll place I'll place that over my edges, and then rub it on, so I don't have as great a chance of accidentally scraping, you know, off of my transfer and scratching my paint. This paint is not really gonna scratch easily, but, you know, if you're rubbing pretty hard, it doesn't matter how well you've prepped or painted or any of that, it's, it's if you're scratching that hard, you're gonna scratch something. Even a factory finish for the most part. Come on, little guy. Got a little stubborn guy. Okay. Well, I did not do a very good job. Too much talking, less rubbing. Okay. Mm. Gosh, I'm just gonna go over it again. I didn't do a very good job. all day putting this one transfer on. Where's my mojo? Hey, my mojo. Okay, so, well, eventually, I'll get this on here. That little guy just doesn't want to come off. There he goes. There you go, little guy. All right, All right here it comes. Look how pretty that green, uh, those green leaves are on that green. Isn't that pretty? And one other thing that I should mention about the new transfer um, manufacturing, um, manufacturer, I'm sorry, is that um, I've, I've seen and I've, I've seen people, you know, comment about how they're harder to layer on top of each other, so like different transfers on top of each other from the newer ones with the grid line, so like placing them and layering them. They are a little bit harder to rub onto each other, but they will, they will do it. I mean, I've seen people say, you know, 
apply your transfer, seal it, and then apply your second layer, which that's totally fine. If you can't get it to work, that, that is definitely an option, but um, it won't hurt anything. But it does take some elbow grease to get them to layer, but they will. Everything apparently is taking me some elbow, elbow grease. Okay, jeez. Take back what I said about how easily it sticks to this paint because of course every other time it does but when I'm on the, on the camera it just doesn't want to do it. Ah! Right, let's try this again. Jeez, oh Pete. We got this, we got this, so we got this. I guess while I'm doing this is a good time of day to see if there's any questions. Besides, why are you taking so long? That's a good question, and I cannot, I cannot answer that. Um, let's see. Yes, the green leaves on the green is really, um, it is, it's pretty, I like it. Yes, yes, the yes, the release backing. There you go. That that's what it's called. Not that clear sheet. Once you release this, I could hang on to this and use it for when I put my flowers on. Because some of the flowers I will be applying like individually. So I'll have to cut them right around to the the um the you know edges of the, the print, the flower. And that will not leave me very much room for rubbing them on. So if I have a little flower, you know, I'm gonna be it's gonna be you got to be real careful so you don't scratch your paint. But this piece right here will be perfect to hang on to in order to um, just throw over the back of a little flower and boom. Just rub it on. Good lord. because this is never this tricky to get on. So let's start from this side and see what happens. One day we'll be done with this transfer and we'll move on to another transfer. We're just gonna roll with it. Roll with it and keep it going. Ah. Come on, little bit buddy. So, mm -mm -mm -mm. we're almost there. We're in the home stretch. We are in the home stretch. tip of the leaf right there I'm gonna get. But we're there. Okay. She's okay. Okay. Well. Maybe I'm just impatient. Maybe it's the stick. I'm blaming the stick now. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go over it with my finger pad or my heel or my palm on my hand. Make sure it's on there really well. Everything's stuck. The edges are all down. So they don't start curling up, peeling up, none of that stuff. We don't want that. I want it to be on there really well. Um, a design like this doesn't have much bubbles or wrinkles just because it's so thin and delicate, but it's not impossible. So pop any bubbles, smooth out any wrinkles. Make sure those edges are wrapped down on that surface. Okay, so there is one end for now. I'm thinking I'll probably end up taking some of these or mm, Maybe another little green branch and, and coming out just a little bit more. I don't know. Maybe I'll do that on top. But let's get to getting with the flowers. So now we want to layer some clusters of wondrous floral too. 
strategically onto our um, new transfer. I cannot tell you the name of, but it's really pretty right here. So I'm probably going to try to eliminate as much of the green as I can from this transfer, just because it makes it look <laughs> the green here. Okay, the vibrance, vibrant, vibrancy of the greens here kind of make that look dead. I'm not going to lie. It makes that look a little bit like a dead leaf. So I'm going to kind of avoid those. But um, I think that something like this here, this little chunk here, would go nicely up in a corner. Uh, maybe even cut this little chunk. So let's go ahead and start with... I, don't, um, let's see. I think I'm just going to cut these colorful pinky, rosy, reddish... Um, I don't know what color this is exactly. It's like a rosy pink red. I think those look really good with the green. So we're going to go and cut this out. See how customization is the name of the game for me anyways. I love to do this. I love to cut them out and see what happens. See where it takes me. Let the, um, you know, let the creative juices really flow. Okay, so I'm gonna put this right up here. Ooh, careful with that guy, careful, careful. All right, I'm gonna start with this up here in the corner. Um, each of the transfers around the very edge has this little, I don't know, less, a little less than a quarter of an inch kind of um, space. I use it for my fingers when I'm you know, applying them, but we don't want that on here because we want our flowers to be right up straight flush with the top of the um, inset area. I don't want a little gap of, of you know, green up top, so I cut that off and place it right in here. And careful touching the back of these. I know sometimes it's very difficult not to, <laughs> so just be very careful. Be very, very careful. So let's try... Um, we want it right in the corner. Let's move it out just a little from the corner. How about like this? Right there sounds good to me. Okay, so that little guy is going to go there. And then I think I would like to add some other colors, like not just the pinks, but like, you know, yellow and this pretty coral and white and pink. So let's grab some of those. And we can put those kind of right... I don't know, maybe one here, maybe one here. I don't know. Let's see what happens. But I do like these little guys over here. So I'm going to go and cut these out. I love these transfers so much. It used to pain me sometimes to cut them like this, but I know it's for the greater good, right? It used to pain me cutting into them, but it's like, you know, it'll be awesome. So it'll be worth it. Um, let's try to stick this guy in the corner here like that. Then we'll find one. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to place this guy here in the corner. Kind of plop right down in there, I think. And there looks good. So we'll put him right there. And then I want to put one kind of like right here to like marry this space a little bit. Like make it look like one piece, not just kind of chopped up a little bit. So I, I don't know, I was thinking maybe the yellow guy would do that really well, or this guy here. But I think yellow would look nice there. So it's going to cut out, um, well, let's see. Actually, maybe both of these. Yes, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do it just like this, I think. Yeah, let's do it. Put the yellow guy in the corner, and then we'll line that up right there, and then we'll have this perfect little corner that our grid lines so generously are allowing us to save time by measuring and just cut right on those grid lines. Yo, time is money, folks. Time is money. And I could leave that little greenery piece if I wanted to, but I don't think I want to take away from the new transfer, do I? Or do I? Uh, uh, I don't know. Well, let's put these on first and then we'll decide. Then, 
After that, I will have shown you really basically what we are doing, my sneak peek in layering the new transfers um, with the newer transfers. So here's what I'm talking, here's what I was talking about. See, I'm trying to be real careful and not scratch my paint because I cut all the way around the edge. But, ha ha ha, I can just throw that down on it. And then I can rub all crazy however I want. Right? Okay. See? That was easier than being all careful. Who wants to be careful? Okay, so I'm just going to peel up in the corner. And there's this section. Almost. This section right here. definitely want to rub very well and pop bubbles. Anytime I'm layering transfers, I get bubbles. So you just want to smooth those out, wrinkles too, and uh, make sure there's no air bubbles. Air bubbles are not your friend when it comes to transfers. You may think, oh, it's just an air bubble. It'll go away. Uh, yeah, it'll go away. It'll dry out the adhesive on the back of the transfer. And after you've sealed it, um, then it will crack and split and roll and come apart. And you'll be like, what happened? What happened to my beautiful transfer? You might have had an air bubble. All right, so let's just rub this side on and place that last one and then we'll be done. We'll be all done. Yes, it does take a little bit longer to customize, cut in place, and you know all the individual elements like that, but it's so worth it to be able to see it and not be like, oh my gosh, I've seen that a thousand times before already. Because you know, people are always, I, I see and hear a lot like, ah, don't you people get tired of looking at the same flowers over and over again? Well, no, I don't. I don't. Well, first of all, they're nature. How can you get tired of nature? And B, there's so many ways to use them that like, you you know, if you use them different ways, you can't really get tired of seeing the same thing over because it's always different, you know? All right, so um, I'm going to cut off that little green guy. I don't think I want him after all. Sayonara, little whatever those are. What are those, box ivy, bay leaves, something like that? I don't know. Boxwood, some boxwood. I don't know, whatever those are. They're pretty. Ain't going to use it on here, though. All right, right up in the corner. Place it, rub it, scrape it. After this, I probably, I need to decide if I'm going to add some other elements like skulls or something. Or, I mean, I already got skulls on the bottom of this piece, so something related. Ooh, I got an idea. I got an idea, and I'm going to do it, but you're not going to see it till it's done. So, um, ha. Huh. So, yeah. How's that for some uh, suspense? I know you're all dying to know what my idea was, right? You're just dying to know, darling. Dying to know. But alas, you shall find out in due time. Okay, so I'm rubbing on my little third layer here. Popping, I don't know, you probably can't hear those bubbles popping, can you? But you can feel them in here and pop. Okay, smooth it out, smooth it out. Then, add my other secret element that I'm not telling you about until you see this. When it's done, maybe next week, maybe tomorrow, you never know. 
Um, but anyway, so that is, my dears, layering and a little sneaky peeky of a new transfer design that is coming out full release and availability tomorrow. You should be able to order from your local retailer. If you don't have a local or a favorite retailer that you order from, um, you can go to the uh, link in the for the retail website in my description, but we do urge you to try to find your retailers first. It's best to find relationships with ones you like to work with that you get along with and you can trust and they can help you out. And you know, if you have a defect, they'll be happy to replace it. Or, you know, maybe somebody is not quite your type of, you know, everybody has those relationships they form where they, um, you know, jive with people. So jive with your retailer, find the one you jive with. And, um, yeah. That's all I got. Look how pretty that is. It's like it's hanging out from underneath the shelf. Oh, I love it. <sighs> okay. Anyways, well, I'll see you guys uh, next Thursday at noon-ish EST. Noon my time. Okay, noon CC time EST. Right here in the Redesign with Prima Facebook group. And um, I hope that you have a great weekend. And I'll see you next week. Bye.